The resilience and the hopefulness of the people of the Iceland is amazing. It's such an example. They have been flooded with the fissure eruption, one of the most important towns in the southern part of the country, a center for fishing. Part of the town was burnt. The wall that they built around it actually is now covered partly by the lava, and they have already started to build pylons to draw the electric line to power the town, the greenhouses there. Iceland is an island. Either you import the food and the ingredients that you need for it, or you have to provide it yourself locally. So they provide it themselves. Remember that Iceland only has half a million people. 200,000 of them are in the age that they can pay tax. And the rest of it has to be, you know, supplemented from somewhere. Although they don't have much money in that sense, but they spend it wisely. They try to save what they have. And that is an example for all of us. Compare it to, for example, another country, a big country, how much wasteful they can be in whatever they do. And they don't provide much services to the citizens at the same time that they have the wealth, but they don't do much for their own citizens. Citizens are left on their own. That's the reason they go for religion, because there is no support. Iceland is different. They care for their people, even against the most fearsome forces of nature. In this example, it is a volcano, which has practically burnt down and cracked the town of the Grindavik. I have a video which reviews all of these things, events, happening over the past few years there. As a geologist, it was the most fascinating time for me to observe what is happening to the Reckoners Peninsula over the past few years. We had first the Fegre in 2021, and this was something like this, erupting at the same time, forming a huge crater. Then second came the Meradere volcano, again gone mad this one, smaller but active, and it spread a lot of lava. Then came the Little Hotro, the earth is split, like a zipper from the south to the north, and this one was very active, although smaller than the Fagadesville, but bigger than Meridoli. Then we had the Sondunka in the uh, uh, Swartzenga area. It was huge, compared to Fagadesville in a way. Then we have this Hagofell Grindavik eruption. It cut through the wall that we built to protect the town uh, from the lava. It didn't work in that sense, but it worked in many other ways. And now we are having a magma rising again. This is the chart that shows the earthquakes. The ones that we have from the Grindavik, this fifth one, is the one you can see here, rising to the surface already. And already one is preparing to come near the harbor, and I believe it will probably erupt around the uh, sports center. Also probably even into the harbor and into the sea. This is something to watch. That will be amazing. Uh, the land rise from the Sundunka was gentle. For the Hagelfeld was even more gentler. But this one is going to be sooner. The slope shows that it's already steeping upward very quick. Before the end of the January, we will have an eruption there. At the most, I think it's probably early days of the February. And this is the prediction that I will put on this. As a geologist, let's see how it is. But at the moment, if it continues like that, we will have eruption by the end of the January. And this is the way that all this like a zipper from south to north and then from north to south are opening up in this area of the Reckoners. The old crack near the sports center and roundabout is one of the likely locations that we will have eruption there. The magma will ooze out. It's already the crack there. The weakness is there. And this is where actually we had part of the magma which is a gaseous part of it, in the November 11th came in, uh, coming out, as you can see here. And this created a lot of damage. The damage this time will be inside the town and probably into the sea. This is something to watch. And I think that uh, you have to watch the video that I have about the futility of uh, actually trying to rebuild the Grindavik. The fragile cannot be saved. Grindavik has experienced the most astounding earthquakes we have seen so far in Iceland. A swarm of earthquakes split the town, cracks appeared, 
some of them three kilometers long. We are not trying to fill them up, but it's futile, I believe, because these cracks are not the cracks just created by the landslides, subsidence, things like that. This is land rising, falling down, and then rising back. This is tectonism. Mid-Atlantic ridge here is opening up. We are creating earth, new ground, by the magma rising to the surface. And in the process, these cracks will widen up and make pathway for the molten rock to come up. This is a rift valley situation where we have a rift opening up, the middle part falling, both sides are rising. This is what we see in Grindavik. This is historically what we see. There is a reason that there is a port there, a shallow water safe enough for the ship to anchor there. There is a reason the two sides of it are higher than the middle part where the port is. And that is the process that has started not now, not this year, decades ago, probably millions of years ago. And nothing can fill up that crack. Otherwise, Grindavik will not exist. That port is there because this crack was created. And it is not going to be stopped. Nothing can fill it. It's futile saving Grindavik.